All right, this is the Sonora Sucker Catastomus insignis. It is another one of the 37 native fish species found in the state of Arizona. It's one of nine sucker species along with razorback sucker and desert sucker. The species in the sucker family are going to have mouths on the bottoms of their bodies. They don't have any teeth in their mouth and like the name implies, they're going to be sucking food out of the water column and off of the bottom. A Sonora sucker is endemic to the Bill Williams River in Arizona and the Gila River system in Arizona, New Mexico, and the Mexican state of Sonora. The Gila River system has a few different rivers where the Sonora sucker are present, so they're found in the Gila River main stem itself, the Salt, the Verde, the San Pedro, the Santa Cruz, and the San Francisco rivers. These areas in Arizona, New Mexico, and Mexico are the only places on earth where Sonora sucker are found. So one of the first things you might notice about a Sonora sucker is this really nice, defined, clear, diamond-shaped scale pattern that they have. And these guys also exhibit bicoloration. So on the top here, they're gonna be more of an olivaceous color. And then on their dorsal side, and then on their ventral side, they're gonna lean into more of a generally yellow to whitish color. The Sonora sucker has five sets of fins, the first one being the dorsal fin on the top of the body, the second one being the caudal fin, also known as the tail fin on the back portion of the body. There's three sets of fins underneath the fish, also known as ventral fins, the first one being the anal fin right behind the anal vent, the pelvic fins on the midsection of the body, and then the pectoral fins on the chest of the fish. For a sonora sucker, the head of the fish, you see it's going to be rounded on the dorsal side or the top side, and then the bottom or ventral surface is going to be flattened. You can also see this line going down the fish. This is known as the lateral line. The lateral line on the fish is one of its sensory organs, so how we have five different senses for us, taste, smell, sight, sound, and touch. The sonora sucker and other fish can also pick up on vibrations in the water. So whenever a fish is swimming close to them, they'll feel the vibrations on their lateral line. And it goes down the length of their body from the operculum down to the caudal fin. So this species is found in both cold water and warm water streams. It can be found at elevations of up to 6,500 feet and it primarily occupies cool habitats and shaded areas along cliff faces and root systems and along log piles. The adults at nighttime will come out and feed along the margins of ripples and runs. So these guys' feeding habits vary by system. In some systems, they're entirely insectivorous, meaning that they only feed on insects. And then in other systems, they're omnivorous, meaning they'll eat plant and animal matter, like macroinvertebrates, plant debris, algae, and then other small insects. Sonora sucker usually spawn from February to early July. Spawning takes place between two males and one female. They'll spawn on shallow riffle habitat that's often disturbed and their eggs are adhesive so once they're fertilized they'll drift down into that gravel, stick to the gravel, and then once they hatch they'll drift downstream into backwater habitat, stay there until they're juveniles and ready to move back out into the main body of the stream. The Sonora sucker and desert sucker look quite similar to each other. A lot of times they inhabit the same habitats and they can be easily confused with each other, especially as juveniles. Sonora sucker, unlike desert sucker, did not have that scraping plate on their lips and their scales are typically larger and outlined in black. Sonora sucker are one of the few native big river species left in the lower Colorado River Basin, but their populations are fragmented and are slowly declining. Threats to the species include habitat modification via dams, dewatering, and surface water diversions. Dams change the river morphologies of rivers into large open reservoirs, and Sonora sucker needs a variety of river morphologies to be successful like rapids, riffles, runs, and pools. Groundwater extraction and surface water diversions lower the water in rivers and can completely dry out rivers, thereby destroying Sonora sucker habitat. Invasive species and non-native predators like yellow bullhead, largemouth bass, flathead catfish, and white bass, to name a few, are found in a lot of the Sonora sucker's historic habitats. All of these fish prey on Sonora sucker and they limit the recruitment of young Sonora sucker into larger individuals and they can limit the success of recovery for the species. 
Sonora sucker are currently listed as endangered in Mexico. In Arizona, they're listed as a species of greatest conservation need. In the United States, they're not currently federally listed as endangered or threatened, although they've disappeared from most of the main stems in the rivers in which they're found. The largest assemblage of Sonora sucker that I've seen personally is here in the Lower Salt River above the Granite Reef Dam. The American Indians use them as a very important food source and in ancient archaeological sites in central and southern Arizona, they're one of the most found fish bones. Today they're very seldomly eaten, but kayakers, tubers, and paddleboarders can all snorkel with them here in the Lower Salt River and fly fishermen consider them a prize catch due to their difficulty in capturing.